I'm David Kohlmeyer, the founder of the Las Vegas Legal Network. The reason why I started the Legal Network is that I noticed that consumers were looking for lawyers and they didn't know what to look for, who to call, where to go. My goal was to create the Legal Network in Las Vegas to help people find the right lawyer to help them depending upon their legal case. I'm not an attorney. This is a lawyer referral network that is helping people get the right lawyer when they need it the most. We offer 24 hours a day, seven days a week, where we have lawyers in the network ready and available to help people whatever their situation or whatever their problem is. Whether they got arrested, an accident, injured, family law cases, whatever legal matter, the Las Vegas Legal Network is here to help people in Clark County. Another person can have, let's say, a red mark or a scratch. Today, we have some special guests. We have Thriving Warriors, Jason Thomas, who is the Director of Client Services, we have Edward Bevilacqua, who is the Director of Education, joining us today. My lovely co-host, Beja Rivera. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for everyone coming in together, talking about problems and how we solve problems, but I want to know more information about Thriving Worry and how this can help people in our community. Yes. Jason, Thri go ahead. Thriving Worry is a program that focuses on removing barriers for people in Clark County and in Nevada. Um, our program has 11 years of history, uh, we evolved our program into Thriving Warrior where we can now focus on not just employment, not just housing, but actually taking people from surviving to thriving. Um, we definitely are doing great things with our people in the community. They are working uh, entry level positions, but now we're focusing on taking them to actual career lifetime uh, employment. Next and, level. Next level. Um, and so like that's been a, um, a great task for us. Um, it's not going to be easy, but we've been doing a great job and our, our people are responding well to our program. So tell me a little bit more, like when we say thriving where I don't think people really truly understand surviving to thrive. We say, so is that what we said? So, so when we think about surviving, we think about in, in the context of our program, we think about people who are in entry level positions, right? People who are just getting a job. They're making $10 an hour. Um, they're going to work, but they're not getting to that next step in their life, right? We all have goals. We hopefully have goals that increase, right? We start from $10 an hour. We want to work $15, get $15 an hour, and that goes on and on. And so what we are focusing on is taking people from entry-level positions to moving them to career positions. And the way that we do that is we get with the individual, we sit down, and we identify their career goals, we create a career portfolio for them, and then we outline the steps that it takes to get to those goals, right? Because mm -hmm. those those goals aren't a straight line. Sometimes it takes detours, and you got to get off, and you got to get on, and you have to continue to persevere. Um, and one of the benefits of our program is, unlike people who are out in the community doing those things on their own, we are doing it together as a community, um, and we're assisting them in removing those barriers, whether it's getting the necessary identification or getting the necessary certificates for for a CDL licensing or things like that. We work together, we identify those goals, um, and then, and I think that might be a client calling Ed right now. Put your, call. Put your phone on, okay. on silent, buddy. <laughs> That's a rookie move. Oops. <laughs> it, it happens. I mean, these are people calling all, the, all day long, which is it's great with Edward. It, and that's a real time thing, right? And mm -hmm. so we have people from prison who are uh, subscribing to our our magazine that we send out to all the prisons in Nevada, and they want an opportunity, right? And we want to help people move forward. And so Ed's fielding calls all day. We're trying to find the right fit for our program so we can help these men and women move forward in their life. I love that, honestly, the surviving to thriving. To me, I just call it like surviving because, you know, we do live in survival mode. Like Definitely. At some point in our lives, like we just want to live. 
Exactly. And so thriving, just living. So exactly. I like that. I appreciate it. Thank you. So would you? So it's basically anyone looking for future opportunity, whether it's employment or job, CDL, you're helping them like as case management, educational component to help them get to the next level, right? Exactly. So in, in, on a simple, you can look at it very simply by saying we're helping stabilize their lives so they can then get a platform that's necessary for them to move forward, right? Uh, I did case management and I, and I work with the homeless population. And when you're dealing with the homeless population, they are in strictly survival mode. They're eating for the day, they're living for the day. And a lot of our clients, they're, they're coming out of prison or they're coming out of rehabilitation facilities. They're living for the day. They're trying to get through the day. What we want people to do is have a two-year plan, have a three-year plan, and how can we work for today towards that three-year plan. So you're just taking people to the next level, which is great to hear, and we definitely need that in Las Vegas. Definitely. Especially yes. I know there's, there's a big homeless community, and that's Huge. all over the place in general, but I think we definitely need some help. Um, and by the way, I, you know, I know that you this is when you were meeting today, but you being a former, you know, the Rebel from quarterback, 99 to 2003, yes. you being a true leader, I actually think people probably look up to you, probably great to have a mentor case manager, totally. client, you know, services that you're doing. Right. But I think you're probably a perfect fit for that. People want to look up to you because of your nature to lead. Oh, well, he's also 6'4". 6'4 uh, yeah. <laughs> does help, doesn't it? Yeah, we can actually look up to you. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and a lot of things that I try to do is I try to share my life experience. Uh, I'm, I'm from Compton, California, so I'm from the inner city. I've been around the neighborhood. I've seen things that, you know, some people haven't seen. So I can understand how it feels to feel counted out. I can understand how it feels to feel like the deck is stacked against you. But I also went to University of Southern California in a full scholarship. So I saw the other side and I know that the other side lives really good. And, and there is a pathway for you to get there, but you might not see the light. You know, you gotta, you gotta work in the darkness before you get to the light. And, and getting our people to understand um, that it will happen if you continue to work is, one of our tasks it's one of our most difficult tasks because they're so used to disappointment they're just waiting for it to happen right they're not waiting for the call for success too good to be true so something negative has to happen what is your I angle hate that mentality it's 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 the and hate is a strong word but it's the mentality of people who are just surviving mm -hmm. right if you say you're going to help me are you trying to take my bags if you say that you know come over here i'll give you a ride are you trying to to kidnap me, right? These are people who live hard lives, and, and that's a reality in our community. And so for us to say, hey, here's my hand, I want to help you, I want to give you an opportunity, and then back it up with action and a plan, um, that's a great responsibility, and we take this. Now, it's not always roses. People don't always take advantage of the opportunity, um, but it's our responsibility to have the, the resources available, and if you're willing and ready, we're here for you. You definitely have to come back on the show so we could get more into detail about that. I would love to. Thank you. So I know that we're going to have, when we come back in the next segment, I want to have um, Edward Bevilacqua talk about the you know, education component of how they're helping for education. It's great, the leadership, the mentorship, um, case management, helping people in general. How are most people finding these days? And what, what is the main number to call if people need help and they're watching the show and they or they know somebody? What's the main phone or how do they get in touch with you guys? The main well, way, go, go ahead. Yeah. So... The main number is our 765-537-8480. Okay. And uh, we're going to put information up as well. But the bottom line is, is that you guys are available. And then if other people want to refer other people that need some help. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more of the educational component in general of how you're helping people and then how we're solving problems in general and maybe some success stories that you guys can share. So we'll be back in a quick minute uh, while we just have some sponsor uh, commercials. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sounding good has never been more simple. At Sticky Pod Studios, we strive to make it as easy as possible to reach your audience. Our state-of-the-art podcasting facility enables you to come in, sit down, and speak to your audience. We handle the tech. It's that simple. Visit our website or DM us on Instagram at Sticky Pod Studios. We'll see you soon. We are back. This is David Colmeyer, the problem solver. Today we have Edward Bevilacqua. We also have Jason Thomas with Thriving Warrior, my co-host, Beja Rivera, talking about Thriving Warrior and how we're taking people to the next level. I, we, as we discussed a little bit about the program, I wanted to discuss a little bit about you know, the director of education, the educational component side of things, because some people think that maybe it's some advanced program, it's a two-year you know, degree. Like, Tell us a little bit about the educational component of it. Okay, well, thank you, uh, Dave and Beja, for having us here. Uh, you know, I think Jason has kind of said everything, but I'll try to support some of the things that he said. 
And uh, we started 11 years ago doing this, helping people remove barriers from their lives. And our main focus at that time was people coming out of prison, people in prison, people coming out of prison. All of the studies show the second best way to not go back to prison is if you have work that is stable and meaningful to you, that you are passionate about. Correct. That's the second best way to not go back to prison. You want to know the first best way? What? Die. If you die, then you don't go back to prison. Yeah, they, they haven't figured out how to take dead people back to prison yet. <laughs> but uh, They're working on it. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so how do you not go back to prison? Well, you have work that you're passionate about. The problem is most of the people who go to prison are not well-educated. So they don't have the skills that are needed to get the jobs they want that they're passionate about. Got to have something to lose. You, well, you got to have something to lose and you got to have something that you feel proud of. You know, very few people feel proud wearing a little paper hat at work, you know, saying Dervener Schnitzel on it. You know, some people do. Nothing mm -hmm. against Dervener Schnitzel, but a lot of people, work is work. guys coming out of prison, it's like, mm, you know, that's just not me. They don't want to mm -hmm. do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they don't have the skills to get the kind of work that they actually want to have. And so we, our focus is, is uh, our found, foundational focus has always been to help people learn the skills so they can get the jobs they want so they don't have to do the things that landed them in prison or homeless or whatever. I and love it. So we're really good at that. And as Jason said, we have a magazine that we publish monthly that goes into the prisons and has our correspondence course in it. And we're in about 14 states with our correspondence course. And so what differentiates us, one of the things is education is the key. If you want to get work that you're passionate about, our target market, our, our people, are people who are just also not well educated. And so, know, how most of the people, so fine, they're in prison. I mean, if, if someone's homeless, will you help them as well? Oh, if, absolutely. If they make contact with our program, and okay. we, we have an intake process to make sure that people are the correct fit for our program, mm -hmm. right? Because sometimes people aren't looking to work. So we need people who in our program who are willing to work and are willing to move forward. So sometimes that's not a good fit. So in regards to, uh, fine, so there's an educational component. Like, is there, uh, you mentioned a program that, with the magazine that goes into the different prisons. They're doing, like, homework assignments back and forth, right? Correct. And then you, what, now, you're, now they're, there, they're out of prison and they're in your program, what type of homework is there? Is, there, is it certificate programs? What, like, what exactly is it? Well, when they get out of prison, now we're to what Jason was talking about. Now where this is the core competency of we have to help people get employment. We got to we got to get them to be stable. We got to get them into survival mode. The day you get out of prison, yeah, you're in survival mode, but it's kind of like you're before survival mode cuz you just got off the bus and you know, you know, you you know at the end of the day I got to be moving forward, but right now I'm free, I feel good. They don't feel they they have much to survive for. Well, they're 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 happy they're out of prison, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they don't have resources. And mm -hmm. a lot of the people we get historically, traditionally, have been right off the bus. We pick them up at PNP, mm -hmm. and now we got to get them stable. Mm -hmm. All of the things that Jason talked about, we have to do food, clothing, shelter, yes. getting them ID, transportation. There's there's a million things that need. So to be just done. to recap, so fine for the people that come out of prison, they need all these things: the food, the clothing, transportation. Mm -hmm. Someone that's homeless, technically, right, they need food, clothing, transportation, same, same thing. thing. So as long as they're committed, to basically going to the next level, they they want to succeed in life, and you're going to help them. You have the resources things. for. We, we do. do. Okay. And what you know, as Jason said earlier, not here, but earlier, is this is the next gear. So people are running at whatever gear they're at. They've gotten to this point. So Jason is taking people to the next gear so they like can that. then move mm -hmm. up. So what other types of, so normally I know that you've always spoken in the past since we know each other about entry level positions. Um, what types of employers are helping Thriving Warrior um, with getting initial entry level jobs? I know that you want to take them to another level, but what, what employers do you work with right now yes. that really help? Yeah, we have a bunch of great employers and the key about these employers for us is they care more about the person's future than their past. Right. And it's not just about how can I make money? I'm here to help you get to the next level. So we have about five or six employers that are committed specifically to helping people get to the next level. And it's a foundational job. This isn't a career. This is your first stop. This is we got to get you to close the gap on your work history. If you've been in prison for five years, you got a five-year gap, right? You got to close the gap. 
you got to practice being a good employee, learning to be an employee again. Mm -hmm. so again, five-year gap in your work history. You've been out of the game for five years. And then third is money. And a lot of people who haven't had money for a while, one of our problems is what? Don't know how to First measure. paycheck. You know? Blow it. Yeah. Um, and just to kind of answer that question, some of the, those employers are 7-Eleven. Um, we actually just started a partnership with Walmart, um, which is huge for us to to do something with Walmart because they're the, the biggest retailer in you know in the United States and, and maybe the world. So Walmart, we have Get Fresh as well, um, Nailer. Those are warehouse jobs, and so we try to identify, especially with our entry level position guys. It's two lines: are you are you trying to go into retail entry level retail jobs, or are you trying to work into a warehouse? type of environment and we can try to get them in those two pathways initially so we can get them stabilized and working getting a paycheck and then that's when we drill down and say okay now what is your three-year plan and then we go from there so we have great partners in the community walmart just hired a guy um, from our program yesterday which is great because i'm able to talk directly to their hiring manager and they pull our people's applications out of the pack of thousands of applications that they get and our people in our program have priority over those who don't know, who who aren't in our program, and and that guy, I think a significant thing is how long had he been gone? How long had he been? Uh, I think eleven years. He was in federal prison. Yeah. So it's a long time. So I, it's interesting you said that because there's, there's a gap where people want to say, "What have you been doing for the last ten years?" Yes. So at least if you have a job that you're working, and they always say that when you have a job, mm -hmm. it's better to be looking for a job when you have the job, right? right? And when especially, you don't. especially if you it's a lot less to lose when you already have a job in general. Mm -hmm. So I think also you feel better about yourself. Like, hey, no matter what, if I don't yeah. get the job, I already have a job right mm -hmm. now. So I think it's also- And you're not so desperate to I, take the job. Yeah. Exactly. I call it the dignity of work. It doesn't matter how much you're making, but there is a certain dignity that everyone has when they have employment. And to piggyback, I'm sorry, quarterback off of that. There we go. I was- <laughs> Pile on. Now I'm speaking your yeah. language. Right. Now yeah. I'm speaking your language. Yeah, you are. Um, what what made you just because you know you said that this has been going on for 11 years like there's already a foundation that was there what made you so passionate about it so i have a career in parole and probation and case management um, and i encountered the program when i was working with another agency as a um, case manager um, i hit it off with ed and i liked some of the things that they were doing for my clients when i was doing case management um, and I saw a fit in their company for me to come in and, and add my skill set to make it a little what I felt like could, could improve the program. Mm -hmm. um, we discussed it, and it was the right time, and so I made the move. <coughs> Sorry, no, that's a great. <clears throat> excuse me. It's a great point, in, you know, of, of helping people and changing, like I said, from your leadership of you know you being a rebel and, so, and you're helping people in general, and you have a background. And again, I think people just look up to you in general. I think it's important to have that, you know, where you're working. Because some people, um, if you've been in prison, sad to say other people just don't look up to that. that you know, I want to mm -hmm. look up to somebody that's already doing something. So when we come back um, after this next break, I want to talk about, like, how we solve the problems of, you know, getting people. Because there's so many people in Clark County. How are we getting them mm -hmm. jobs and employment? And also the shortage, you know, people saying there's a shortage of employee, employees. And that's yes. why everyone's, like, closing early and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. when we get back, we'll address the issue in general. So we'll be back in one minute. This is David Coleman of The Problem Solver. Thanks for coming back. We are here again talking about Thriving Warrior with Edward and Jason, co-host Beja. We're talking about how we're helping people, you know, get employment, housing, people that are at a point low in their lives that they basically need to level up. And Thriving Warrior basically is doing that locally here in Las Vegas, North Las Vegas, Henderson, even in Pahrump. And I believe you guys are doing statewide, even going to other states, you guys are expanding, which is 14 great. 14 states. Mm -hmm. So quick question in regards to this. Some people, you know, these days, one of the topics is like rents are going up. People are like losing housing. Then they're mm -hmm. also saying people say they can't find a job. What's your take? Because you're working with people getting them jobs. Is it really that hard to get a job? It seems like everyone's hiring, but nobody really wants to work. What's your take on that? Well, I think everyone wants to have a quality of life. Um, and how they get there is is difficult sometimes. Sometimes people have barriers in their employment history, whether it was, you know, lack of employment um, or um an inability to have the skill set necessary to obtain the employment that, that they really would like to have. 
So our goal in Thriving Warrior, outside of just the larger problem, what we try to focus on is identifying people's skill set, improving that skill set, and then matching them with employers that can match that skill set. Now, in the big picture of employment, it's tough out there um, because you have a lot of people who don't have stability in their everyday life, and it's hard to go out and build a career or to be a fully functional person when you have instability in your everyday life. So I think that's one of the issues that that the county and the, the country is facing, that people are in, have a, a huge amount of instability, which is makes it difficult for them to go out and function at their best. No, it's a very good point. So in regards to housing, how does it work? Because a lot of people say, you know what, if I'm homeless or I just lost my house, I mean, everyday people can lose their place. I talked to a lot of people that mm-hmm. their rents are going up and they're homeless and stuff like that. How does the housing situation work? Are people kind of concerned or even nervous about your program about the housing? How does that component work? Well, as Jason said, we have a screening process. And when people come in, we find the things that they need. Housing is number one. And so we have apartments that we have available for our people that we invest in them. And once we get them to the point where they are employed, then they can start paying for their housing. Right? Right. Yes. And we, all of our resources and services are front loaded, right? So when you come into our program, you know, we're not saying, where's your money? You can't come in. We're just saying, hey, this is the amount that the housing is. And once you start working, we expect you to start paying your bills like everyone else, right? Mm -hmm. So So we give you an opportunity. We put you in housing. You don't have to pay the rent initially. You, You give a bill and eventually you're expected to pay that bill when we put you in a position to to get a job and to, to get income. Yeah, that screening process is definitely important. Very so important. the goal is that you're, you're helping them get started. We want to help you, know? you get started. We want to put a roof over your head. We want to stabilize you. And then we want to find you employment so you can start working and so you can start being a functional member of society. What else are we missing that we want to tell the public as well? So so Thriving Warrior, we're going to throw up the number a few times maybe of this last segment that if people want to call, they need some help getting a job, employment, housing, stuff like that, that you're willing to help people in different ways. There is an intake process, but the bottom line is if it's not the right spot, then I'm sure you can refer them to somebody else oh, as definitely. well. But a lot of people probably don't know about the program. So the number's on the screen. Again, there's 300,000 know, Cox subscribers that are watching this. So if someone needs help, I would urge them to reach out to Thriving Warrior, especially get some information. It may not be the perfect program, but at least mm-hmm. they're, they're knowledgeable about it today. What other items are you basically that we're missing here? Because we got housing, we're helping them, you're basically helping the whole person right. basically go to the next level. You're basically helping them thrive to the next level by getting entry level employment and making a career and helping them in general, even I'm sure there's counseling and help other other processes, but what other things are we missing that people may need? So it's, the providing? components are housing, education, counseling, and then we also provide assistance in food, transportation. Um, it's basically what they call in the counseling world, wraparound services. Wraparound services. Like we this. try to provide every service that an individual would need to assist them <coughs> and to get into the next step of their life. Uh, and Pretty I would much say, to set them up for success. Yeah, and I would say the person that we accept in has to be committed to success, right? Yes, definitely. They, they, they can't. So what happens if someone has like a drug problem? I call you up right now. I'm like, listen, you know, either I'm homeless or whatever it may be, not even homeless, regular person. I need some help, but I got a little bit of a drug problem. Would you help me get into a program for like rehab? Well, we will refer you to the rehab programs in the community. There's thousands of them in Clark County. So once they do the rehab program, then you can accept them? We have taken several clients out of rehab um, and tried to get them stable. The success rate varies. However, what we do is provide the resources. We provide the platform for people to be successful. There's an old adage, you know, I'm sure we've all heard it, you can lead a horse to water, right? But you can't make him drink. So that's what we do. We're leading the horse to the water and we're saying, here's your life. And here's what your life could be. Here's your opportunity. And it's, it, there is individual responsibility revol- involved in this process. And so mm-hmm. we need people who are committed and are willing to take that step. And if they are, we have a program for them. You know, one thing that's interesting, some information that I had here when I had you guys come on, I like this, how you worded it, that we help empower the human spirit by providing basic services, career services, and other services to people in need, including veterans, homeless, and ex-felons. By, what was that? Oh, so um, by understanding the problem, evaluating each each possible um, solution, choosing a possible solution, and then using the necessary resources to solve the problem. I mean, I love the wording in general. So the I bottom line from you is, you got that from me. Yeah, don't you remember that? No, I don't last remember. year. 
Did I? It was, oh, yeah. I didn't, maybe that's you why it sounded so good. That's why it <laughs> sounds so good to you. Me, like, he doesn't understand how great he is. All right. So, <laughs> no, no. I mean, the bottom line is, I mean, you're totally doing stuff. That, I don't think there's that many organizations that do the whole wrap around in general that I know mm-hmm. of. And I, mm-hmm. I try to meet a lot of nonprofits to mm-hmm. refer people to the right place. And my mm-hmm. goal as a retired police officer is to help people with problems. So the bottom line is, you guys are problem solvers as well. And yes. you guys are really actually physically doing. That's why I want people to know about it. And what's great is, you know, with, with Cox, you know, 300,000 subscribers seeing this. Awesome. When they go through the channels and, and say, oh, this is a great program where we'll get this out to other people that need, that are looking for employment or need some help or taking this video segment and actually sending it to other nonprofits that may not be doing the full wraparound to, you know, to get the people help. So as we finish up, um, anything else, major. anything else that you want to share about any, anything you want to give, this is a perfect time to, to let everybody know about it. Yes. I would just simply say that if it's not for you, you might know someone that is for it might be a mom watching this program or son might be in prison. She might be thinking, hey, it's not for me, but I, I want to contact this program for my family member. And so just think about the people in your family who you know that might need that step forward. And I think our program will be a great It's not limited. Them. It's not limited to just the people who are wise. It's, it's whoever is available. And just to recap, if someone is in custody, it's better to have them start working on the program prior to them coming yeah, out. Absolutely. You have that correspondence program yeah, and you absolutely. have books and stuff like that go into the jails into the prison statewide to basically get them going to have a purpose and to actually at least uplift them knowing that when they get out there there will be a future or a program that's Mm -hmm. going to help them so again i really appreciate you guys coming on the show to discuss it today because you guys are doing amazing work in the community i want people to know about thriving warrior in general so i thought it was great that you came on the show and we will if if the program evolves and so on then we'll have you come back on the show you can add any type of updates so we can get it out to the community awesome thank Thank you. you So thanks so much. Again, I'm David Colmeyer. Every single Tuesday, 6 p.m., we have problem solvers, myself, and other nonprofits, community leaders, um, helping people you know, get to the next level, whether it's for employment, for housing, whatever the situation may be. We also have Thursdays at 4.30 um, on YouTube and on Facebook Live, where we also have a one-hour podcast. So again, please join us. Make a difference. And we'll see you next week. Stand out from the noise. Podcasting is one of the great wonders to start creating content for your brand. At Sticky Paw Studios, you have a professional studio with audio and video podcasting capabilities to hit every angle of your market. We have in-house editors who are ready to create micro pieces of content from your podcast to post on social media as well. You come in, sit down, and we handle the tech. It's that simple. Visit our website or DM us on Instagram at Sticky Paw Studios. See you soon. That was weird. It happens all the time.